In this guitar lesson, I'll show you how to play that Tony Rice style guitar lick that I just played a sample of. And this is a two measure long lick that you can play over the C major chord when you're soloing in the key of G. So when you're in the key of G, you know, you got one, four, five chord progression, G, C, and D. When rhythm goes to the C chord, you can play this lick right here. So let's learn the lick first. And after that, I'll show you how you can use this lick in a country and bluegrass guitar solo. And after that, we'll also talk a little bit about these scales and some other music theory stuff. So here's the tablature for the lick. You can see it's two measures long. Let me just play through it a few times for you. slower. You see we've got the pick stroke direction symbols above the tablature, the symbol that looks like a staple, that's the down pick. And then the up pick symbol is the one that looks like a V. Also below the tablature, we've got the fretting hand finger numbers written in. I'll show you which finger I like to use when I'm pressing down each note. So this is the lick here for uh, playing a guitar solo in the key of G, but this is when the rhythm goes to the C chord, because it fits really nicely over the C chord. If you listen to that C chord, keep that sound in your head, and then... So now let's use this guitar lick over a standard 12 bar progression in the key of G. So we're going to play a solo over this 12 bar progression. And I'll show you where you can play this lick and how you can use some other licks to uh, create a guitar solo that sounds pretty interesting and sounds really country and bluegrass. So here's the chord progression, 12 bars long and 12 measures long, however you want to say it. Um, you got four measures of G, then two measures of C, then you go to the second line, we got two measures of G, two measures of D, and then finish it with two measures of G. So you probably already guessed that we're going to play that two measure lick that we just learned over those two measures of the C chord. Let's play through this progression real quick and get a feel for it, and then we'll play some licks over the progression to practice our soloing. Here we go. One, two, three, four. G, 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 C, C, G, G, D, D, G, G. That's it, 12 measures long right there. So if we're playing a guitar solo over this progression, you know, what I would do, we got those first four measures of G chord, you know. So for those first four measures of G, um, when I'm soloing, I would play some type of stock bluegrass lick in the key of G. You know, a lick that's four measures long, something like this. So that was four measures long, just a stock bluegrass lick. 
And if you're wondering, you know, where did I get that lick and where can you learn more of those type of licks, uh, we got a guitar lick library that I put together here at countryguitaronline.com. So we can pull that up on the screen real quick if you want to, to check it out. So here's the guitar lick library. And on the left side, you can filter by key. So we're creating a guitar solo over a 12 bar progression that's in the key of G in this lesson. So we'll just select key of G. That'll bring up a bunch of stock country and bluegrass licks for playing in the key of G. And most of these licks are four measures long. So got some good ideas there. You can uh, check those out on your own time. But a bunch of licks that sound you know, very country and bluegrass. <laughs> stuff like that. So check that out. Um, so really you can play stock bluegrass licks over this entire 12 bar progression and you don't really have to think too much about the uh, chord changes too much, you know, that go to C chord and go to the D chord. But you know, what we're doing here in this lesson is we're making our solo sound like it's actually going to follow the chord progression a little bit better. So that's why we're, we're going to use this uh, two measure lick to play over the C chord that we just learned. So the reason this lick, this two measure lick sounds good over the C chord is because we're pulling in a lot of the notes from the C major chord into this lick. You know, we're still using the key of G scales, but we're pulling in the C chord notes from the scales. I'll explain more of the music theory here in a second, but that's kind of what we're doing uh, to make this solo sound a little more dynamic, like it belongs with the chord progression. So if we go back to this, uh, this 12 bar progression, right at the beginning we got those four measures of the G chord, and I would just play any, well, any old stock bluegrass lick. <laughs> After that, we'll go to the C chord. We got two measures of C chord, that top line of the progression. Right here, this is where we're going to play this lick that we just learned. You hear it sounds nice over that C chord. And then we'll finish up this uh, progression here. That second line, we got two measures of G, and I'll just play some type of stock lick for two measures worth. And then after those two measures of G, we go to a D chord. And we're gonna do the same type of thing right here. We're gonna play a G lick that sounds nice over a D chord. Lots of different ways to do this, but we're gonna pull in some of the, uh, some of the notes from the D chord into this two measure lick. And if we go back to the Bluegrass Lick library, you can see on the screen on the left side there in that filter, I've added a couple new categories. We've got key of G licks to play over the C chord. We've also got key of G licks to play over the D chord. So you can check out some of those licks that sound good over the D chord later also. Uh, here's one of them. It's a two measure lick a key of G lick to play over the D chord, you know? And then let's go back to this progression and finish it up with uh, two more measures of G chord. You know? And right there at the end of the progression, you know, I'll do the same type of thing here, just play some two measure long stock G lick. Let's put all this together. I'm going to play through a complete example of this guitar solo. So as I'm playing through this solo here, you know, we're going to have the backing track playing in the background. It's the exact same chord progression that we just went over. So try to listen for that two measure G lick for playing over the C chord that we learned at the beginning of this lesson and uh, see how it fits nicely over that C chord. And it really makes your solo sound like it belongs with the chord progression.
So that's just a real quick example of how you can use the Guitar Lick library to create some pretty cool sounding guitar solos. Next, we're going to look at the guitar scales a little bit so you can see exactly you know, where these notes are coming from so you can start putting together some really cool note combinations that sound more country and more bluegrass. So let's check out the first scale that we've got here. So the first scale that we're working with is just the G major scale. We've got the fifth position, the G major scale, you know, that chart right there on the screen. Um, black dots on this chart, those are the root notes. So since we're in the key of G, all those black dots will be the note G. And usually when I'm playing through these scale shapes, I like to start on a root note because it just makes more sense. You can really hear that this scale is in the key of G. So there's the G chord. And if we just start on that third fret, low E string, that's the note G. And you can just play through really these notes in any order that you want to. Um, dots just show you which notes you're gonna you can press down. So playing a scale up and down like that it can be pretty boring so what I usually recommend is that you go find a backing track in the key of G and you just play random notes from that scale over the backing track so here's a quick example um, usually when I'm playing random notes from the scale I like to play on every eighth note and I like to do alternate picking on every eighth note. So if we count out one measure in eighth notes, it would go one and two and three and four and. So the picking would go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, one and two and three and four and. And just like that, and just play random notes from that scale chart on every eighth note. do that right there you know to get some good practice get a good feel for using this G major scale so you can play a real basic you know, country bluegrass guitar solo just like that you know playing on every eighth note just random notes from that G major scale one thing that people do a lot um, they turn this G major scale into kind of this you know country sounding G major scale and how they do that is they add in the flat third if we start on the root note of the scale right here, sixth string, third fret, and let's count each scale degree as we go up the scale, just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the G major scale. One, two, three. So that third note, or the third degree, of this G major scale. One, two, three. What you can do to make it sound a little more country, a lot of people like to add in the flat third. So that's the third degree right there. The flat third would be one fret down. That's the A string first fret. So if we play that exact same G major scale with the flat third now, one extra note here, it would sound like this. One, two, flat third, third. So you can hear that flat third in the stock country bluegrass lick that you hear people playing all the time. This one right here. You know? Dun, dun, dun. There's that flat third hammering into the third. So that's something you can think about as you're looking at this G major scale. Start adding in that flat third. And you can do it at you know, any octave, really. There's the 
flat third added into that scale octave, or you could do, you heard it right there, one octave higher. So you can do that at all the scale positions, all the way up and down the neck. So uh, think about that as you're working on the G major scale, start adding in that flat third to make it sound a little more country bluegrass. Then the next scale we're going to look at is the G blue scale. And we looked at this a lot in other lessons, but this, the key of G blue scale will really make your playing sound a lot bluesier. So here's the blue scale. It sounds real bluesy, you know? So to get a really nice country and bluegrass sound, you're going to start mixing the major scale with the blues scale because there's some overlap right there. But try to do the same thing now with the uh, key of G backing track and just play random notes from the blues scale on every eighth note, you know, just pull up that blue scale chart and um, do one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And you can let some notes ring out a little bit longer. different ways you can use these scales but you see how using these basic scales you can create some pretty cool sounding solos. So try that out there, you know, try playing the, uh, the notes from the G major scale on every eighth note over a key of G backing track. Try doing it with the blues scale and also uh, think about adding that flat third to the major scale. So that's really how all this stuff works. You know we've got these two main uh, scales, we got the major scale and we got the blue scale. And to get a really nice country and bluegrass sound, you can start combining these scales here. So thanks for watching to the end of this and also go check out the uh, the guitar lick library that we got here. We've got some uh, bluegrass backing tracks that you can use to practice this stuff in that lick library. You'll see them there if you go to the key of G licks. We've got three different speeds of uh, backing tracks in the key of G. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, plenty more lessons on the way here coming to you soon at countryguitaronline.com.